The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. Success is the new black. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's top businessmen and women. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, success is the new black. Yeah. I just got to let that ride for a minute. I grew up with this music right here. <laughs> <laughs> so for Make- real. <laughs> you, you, you ain't make no babies on that. Nah, that. nah, nah, not yet. <laughs> not, not off that one. <laughs> not off that cut. Oh, man. I'm Roll Moore. This is Success is the New Black on Black Hollywood Live. Uh, my, my co-host, English Cleveland, she is not here. So shout out to her because she is in New Orleans celebrating her birthday. So shout out to her. But I am joined in studio by the one and only CEO of Wealth Nation Entertainment, the deal maker himself, Mr. Rob Terrell. How you doing, man? Oh, man, I'm blessed, brother. I'm so happy to be here with you, Rome. You know, just excited to be in Cali and yeah, man. new environment, man. It's, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was about to say, coming out of the A, what's the weather like down in the A right now? Well, when I left, it was nice. I mean, it was, you know, Com- com- it, was actually, it was actually nicer than it is out here right now. But, oh, wow, man. Don't, <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> no, nah, nah. we ain't got no palm trees or nothing like that. Well, so, yeah, you know. yeah. The beach but, and the palm trees. So, right, you know, I, I give right. you that. I give you that. Right, you guys right. can have better, better weather for a minute. You know? Right. Well, you know, I'm from New York, so I take from coming from New York, I take either one. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Know? True. True. Yeah, yeah man. So let, let's get into it, man. Okay. You see your Wolf Nation. Right. Um, you, you got musical artists all over the place. Um, let, you, you started in the Bronx. Well, right. you grew up in the Bronx, right? Grew up in the Bronx. So you grew up in the Bronx doing boogie, the boogie down Bronx. Straight up. Yeah, man. Yeah. KRS one. Like, you know, yeah, yeah that, that era. That yeah. was. Yeah, that was that was. I, what I like to call and, and and it's it's so sad, but I gotta I gotta say it. It was like the golden age of hip hop. It was. <laughs> it truly was. Yeah. No question. I feel bad for the kids growing up now, because they didn't have the quality. No. That that we had then. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, Not even close. What What was that like growing up, right oh, when hip hop was hitting that its stride and finding itself? It was amazing, man. Because you know during that time it was just like. Music was real. It was true music, you know. It was yeah. hip hop. It was the it was the the essence of hip hop. You know, yeah. you would go to block parties and you know, and and they'd be out there jamming Grandmaster Flash and you know, uh, just artists out there just doing it, man. It was just like an era where, you know, Rakim and and all you know Eric B and Rakim and all like that music that I still yeah. you know that that still gets to. You. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even explain it, man. But it was, it was. I was right in the heart of that. Me and my partner Jamie O, when we grew up together in the Bronx, we were right in the heart mm-hmm. of that, you know. So, just kind of watching that evolve. You know, Russell was running around during that time. You know, yeah, doing yeah, his that thing. Was his his yeah, beginning. That was, yeah. that was his beginning. He was running around, you know, throwing concerts and Run DMC and all of them. Everybody was just getting off the ground. Mm-hmm. So just to watch their careers develop and, you know, build a fan base from the bottom up like grassroots movement, you know, that's that's what it was. Cool, cool. Well, let me ask you this, man, because a lot of people have that story. A lot of people Mm -hmm. have, you know, I I was in New York. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from Queens. Right, right. You know, I grew up with the music and that. But you also grew up with a business acumen. Yeah. And where did that come from? Like, are, are your parents um, in, into business? Like, how, how did that start? Well, you know, actually, um, I'm self-taught, really. Oh, wow. Business. I'm, I'm really, I'm self-taught. You know, what happened with me was that one of my other best friends, Leo Swift Morris, who's an engineer, actually, who's engineered for everybody, Latifah, Tribe Called Quest, all of those groups, De La Soul. Yeah. We working out of a studio in Manhattan called Calliope Studios. Mm-hmm. And of course, I had no interest or talent for engineering or anything like oh, that. <laughs> but what happened, interestingly enough, was that because he was doing his thing, he was so passionate about, you know, the music. Mm-hmm. He needed somebody 
he didn't know anything about the business. So he was like doing deals with no contracts, no paperwork, and he kept getting screwed over. Oh. Yeah, yeah. not getting his publishing, not getting, you know, whatever it was he was supposed to get. Yeah. And because I was his boy, I was his friend, he's like, yo, you got to help me. Yeah. You know, he's like, yo, you, you, you got to help me. Like, I got to, I need some help with this because I just want to do the music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's how I, I get a lot of people that come to me even now with the same thing. But that's how, so me wanting to help him, I started reading books, researching, going online, stuff like that. And I actually started, that's how I got impregnated with wanting to do the business. Okay. Now, since then, later on, you know, I've, I, since then, of course, I've gone on, I've got my master's in business, mm -hmm. and I'm a certified financial advisor and a few other titles. But that's where it started for me, wanting to be on the business side of the business. Okay, yeah. You know? Understanding and, those numbers. And the first deal that we did was with a group called Trends of Culture. Trends of Culture had a deal on the table from Tommy Boy, another offer from Jive RCA, mm -hmm. and uh, and he was their producer, Swift, Leo Swift Mars. He okay. was their producer. And so, again, it was like, oh, man, they got this deal. You know, so-and-so want them, Jive want them, this one want them. You know, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that they don't get screwed. You yeah. got to help. You know, yeah, yeah. I so want to make sure his artists are protected. Exactly. Yeah. So I was, I, I was kind of advising him mm -hmm. and advising them in the background, putting yeah. in my little two cents. Yeah. And yeah. well, hey man, you know, you really supposed to get this up front. Mm -hmm. You know, you really supposed to get that on the back end, and yada 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 yada. And then before I knew it, was like I kind of fell into this role of being a manager. Okay. And, yeah. and that's that's where that's where it started for me. That was like what? That was like eighty seven, eighty eight. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. How how is it because so many artists, so many artists get taken advantage of by the record companies and stuff like that. When you see that happening, does it almost like drive you crazy? Like, ah man, talk talk to me first. Like anybody that knows what's going on, like what happened to TLC? In their early years, not you know, I ain't saying nothing against Pebbles and nothing uh, like that. You but with you know, them, boy. You with them, <laughs> yeah. bro. But you know, it's some stories out there. Everybody right. saw the movie, right? But d does that like concern you? Is that still a very prevalent practice right now in the industry? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the independent artists they have gotten a little smarter. Mm -hmm. I will say, you know, a little bit more business savvy. They're more out there now that are more business savvy than it ever was back in that era. Yeah. However, there's still a substantial amount of artists that just don't know the business side of the business and have no desire really to learn that side of the business. Yeah, got to. They just want to make music. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just want to make music and they they have this kind of presumptuous attitude about it. Like, you know, since I'm so talented and I'm so gifted, Everything else is going to work out. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't always happen and like that. And it doesn't always happen like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so they find themselves in situations where they're very unfavorable situations for mm -hmm. them. And in many instances, it's very hard to get out of those situations. Yeah. It could be a very long time, and your career is now on hold. It's on pause, you know? And so that's, that's you know, they... They really need to have some... Here's the other thing is that some of these guys have people around them that are their homeboys, they grew up together, mm -hmm. or they party together, or they've been supporting them. That doesn't necessarily make them a business manager. Yeah. You know, or somebody that should be handling your business affairs and more, even more importantly, your financial affairs, which are both interconnected. Yeah, yeah. That's it, because that's their lifeblood. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't have you can't have little Roscoe down on the corner... You right, know, running numbers for you, you know. Exactly, yeah, right, right, different. right. Exactly. You got to have somebody with some experience. Right. You don't want little Roscoe talking to a, a a John Ferguson, who's a VP, or Neil Levine, or somebody like that, yeah. who's a 20, 20 year, thirty year veteran, yeah. and he's negotiating the deal specs on your behalf. Yeah, yeah. That and ain't those, gonna work. That's yeah. not gonna work out in your favor. <laughs> You're gonna get ate alive. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know? All right. Well, let, let's uh, let's shoot back to high school, man, because okay. I read something about you that I I got to ask you about, man. Oh man. Because you know, I, yeah. 
in LA is is one thing to have a lot of talent coming out of some schools, mm -hmm. but you went to high school with Heavy D, Pete Rock, and CL Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all of them. We all went to Mount Vernon High School together. Oh, wow. Man, was, Mount Vernon is... A couple Mount of Vernon. other people came out of Mount Vernon. <laughs> a whole lot of people yeah. came out of Mount Vernon. You know, Denzel Washington. Yep. You know, a whole lot of people. So this little town of four square miles, mm -hmm. literally, because that's what it is, four miles, four square miles in any direction, mm -hmm. had a school, Mount Vernon High School, that so much talent came out of that school. And when I was going there, yeah, you know, um, Hev was there, Pete mm -hmm. Rock was there, CL was there, uh, um, Troy was there, mm -hmm. you know, um, Trouble T. Roy, and all of them. We we were all going to that school at the same time. Wow. So yeah, so I watched that whole movement develop right from out of right that school. Right in front of you. Yeah. I'm talking about from the lunchroom. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. From banging on the, the from cafeteria banging on tables. the cafeteria tables. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. And and they spitting. And there's another guy who's now a comedian, who was also came from that school who I went to school with, which is talent. Oh wow. So man. talent. You know talent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I heard talent. That. Talent went to that school. Everybody went to Mount Vernon, man. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I just was at Eddie F's birthday party last week at Apache yeah. in Atlanta, and me and Eddie was talking. You know, yeah, because I haven't seen him in forever. Yeah, yeah. But Eddie F, back in his early stages, one of his first DJ parties was at my boy's my boy's crib mm -hmm. on in in the building, the same building that I lived in, and I was yeah. reminding him of that, and he was like, "Oh man, he was monsters in the game now, yeah, but back then, right? Yeah, watching the he man. got paid he got paid like I think it was two hundred dollars mm -hmm. to DJ that night." He was supposed to be there for four hours, and he ended up staying for like six, seven hours. Yeah, just rocking. This was in a this was in a a, a two bedroom apartment <laughs> in Mount Vernon in the plazas. Yeah, yeah. DJ Eddie F doing it. one or two, that's, doing man, it. That's how it started. I'm though. telling you, yeah, man. Yeah, that that's it. That's how it starts. We watched the whole movement. We was there. Wow. Yeah, cause I I, I met uh, I met Hev when he um, out in two thousand and five. Uh, man, because I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Okay. Yeah, and I met him. He was getting ready. He was working with Delroy Lindo. He was doing a play, um, I think, Medal of Honor rag, and they were rehearsing at our school. And um, that was my first time meeting him. I, you know, I knew about him from years and you know years, but that was my first time actually meeting the brother. And he was nothing but nice to me. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's he's so just cool. oh man, Hev, Hev was just extraordinary. Like he was just even even when he, you know, he really didn't change much at all in my opinion you know mm -hmm. from just seeing him around the way you know you know hev what's up da, da, da. he was the same person even when he blew up all the way through all the way through cool cool you know well who, who were your musical influences back then oh man back then because i mean you you coming from everything from the motown um sound was still <laughs> playing you know mama still had that box right. of albums you know it <laughs> Boy, you, you put me out pop, there, bro. 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 You put me out there, bro. <laughs> man, bro, you ain't right. Bro. I, know, I know my mom. My mama had the box of albums. That's how you know your mama had a life before you. She right, got that right. box of albums of right. music that you never thought she listened to. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, back then, man, I was I was a huge and still am today. Huge Eric B and Rakim. Cool. Yeah. Listen to them. Legends. Pu yeah. Public Enemy. Of course. Oh man, I was. You know, I. I <laughs> I was walking around with the fight the power piece hanging over oh, my, yeah. around my neck and all that, man. You know, I was, you know, militant back then too. Yeah, you know, yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah, Public Enemy, uh, you know, KRS One, of course, yeah. You know, the bridge is over. That mm -hmm. whole thing with him and MC Shan, and you know, those are that's who I was listening to. Yeah, you know. I was even slick listening to Salt and Pepper because uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I, I mean, that yeah. was all part of that same movement, that same era. So, Pete Rock and Seal Smooth, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody coming out of Mount Vernon. I was a huge fan. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, had to them. Be. I was living there. Yeah. You know, and and I was a part of it. So, you know, I just I was always been a fan of like just about the pure music, and you know, lyricism. You know, I'm a real true hip hop fan. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just like when they was really, you know, putting it down like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just putting it down raw. 
and and nice lyrics, nice, nice lyrics, passion, yeah. right? Yeah, right. Just right. over some straight hip hop beats. Yeah, yeah. You Just know? give me a six sixteen and repeat. Exactly. Yeah. You know, cool. so that's where I come from. So that's always like a part of me that I that I'm always gonna be a fan of that, and I see it going back to that. Yeah, I really do. Slowly but know? surely. Exactly. You know, Ooh. LL Cool J, of course. That whole Def Jam squad, everybody, Slick Rick, uh, that whole Def Jam movement was yeah. crazy. Slick Rick the Ruler. Slick Rick the Ruler. <laughs> yeah. The Ruler's back. Mm hmm. Yeah. Man, so now in your position, you mm -hmm. have a, the ability to change the game because, you know, you're, you're running Wealth Nation. But let's, back then, what, there were, and I'm, and, you know, forgive me if I forget anybody, but you had Andre Harrell right. with Uptown, you had, um, um, you had L.A. Reid with um, uh, LaFace. Right. And then you had Suge and you had Puff. Right. Those were the, those four major monsters that everybody remembers. Exactly. Did you ever see yourself back then? Did you see yourself moving toward that position of running your own company? Not really. Back then, I was, I really didn't see myself being, you know, I, when I really felt like, you know, you know who was my guy? Chris Lighty. Okay. Yeah. Chris Lighty is, you know, somebody that I wanted to be like and emulate. Okay. You know, when I watched what they did with Violator. Yeah, yeah. You know, him and Mona. You know, but I I looked up to those guys. My idol, my hero then was really was Russell. Mm -hmm. And watching his grind mm -hmm. and seeing how he was moving, you know. Yeah, but Russell I mean, did it bigger than pretty much all of them. All of them, all of them put together as far yeah. as I'm concerned, you know. And I so if I wanted to be like anybody, I wanted to emulate anybody, it would have been Russell. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. because, you know, there was different elements of each one of those guys that I just couldn't see myself, you know, doing mm -hmm. and, and being like them. The success, of course, yeah, you know, everybody want to be the end result of the process, yeah. which is, you know, to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, I just liked his style, Russell talking about Russell Simmons, his style and how he was moving. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, because of some of the pictures <clears throat> that are out there, people are like, oh, that's... That's little Russell, you know, that's baby oh, Russell. Yeah. You know, they look at me like that, you <laughs> baby know. Russ. Baby Russ, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I get that all the time. It's like, man, Rob, you look like Russell, man. Especially yeah, you, that you're one not doing picture. the yoga though. No, I'm not doing yeah, the yoga. Don't, man. Don't do the yoga. I, yeah. I am meditating though. I am meditating. Okay, now that's good. That's good. It keeps <laughs> you know? your mind clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm doing that, man. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, that's that's always been my thing, man. I just wanted to do right by the artists. Yeah. And give them, you know, the information because the information is what's powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, having the right information and then knowing how to execute, you know, strategically and methodically, knowing what you're doing, how to execute it. Okay. And that's really was my focus, and that still is my focus to this day. I just been named um, regional director for the South by Bungalow Universal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Major. Yeah. Yeah. So that you know, you you're actually are getting that before it's even put out to the public. But oh if wow. You go, yeah, so you you this breaking news? Yeah, breaking news. That's a, right. that's a Black Hollywood Live Black breaking Hollywood news Live. update. Right. Listen, <laughs> yeah. you know, you 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 got it before it's even out there. But if you go to bungalowrecords.com, I'm already up on the site and everything and cool. and um regional director. So I'm over the south. Okay. So. E explain to the um to the, the people who know nothing about the industry what that what that means, what that title means. Well, <laughs> what that means is that all of the artists and producers and everyone that's gonna, you know, that's looking to do a situation with Bungalow Universal because Bungalow is coming back now with Bungalow 2.0. Mm -hmm. So we're on our way, we're coming back, you know, and anybody in that South Market, Atlanta, Memphis, Florida, all of those markets, you know, they have an opportunity to come to me, you know, and based on what they have going on, if it makes sense, then, you know, yeah, we can go from there. We can go from there. Cool. Yeah. So bring your talent, Southern MCs. Come on. I'm from I'm from Alabama, so you, you know we got thousands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You you ready to sit down and listen to all those demos? Oh man? my gosh, man. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I'm looking I'm looking for acts that really have a real true buzz. People that have been working. Mm -hmm. I mean, really working. You know, my motto is there's no movement without movement. Yeah. So people that have been working the regional market and mm -hmm. even maybe national market, putting in that work, you know, um, artists that have invested in themselves, mm -hmm. 
you know, and looking to take things to that next level and understand the new music business, the new music dynamic. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, it ain't no A and R development yeah. and all of that. That's over with. You gotta come to the table ready. Okay. You know, so yeah. we can add water and stir. Mm hmm And and that's where we at. Ready made acts. Ready made. Let's yeah, go. You know who you are already. You know who you are already. Your fans know who you are. You've built a fan base, pretty decent fan base. You know, Bungalow has a very rich history, 14-year direct relationship with Universal, mm -hmm. and we've had hits in every genre of music in the top 10, you know, and so I'm working with my partner, John Ferguson, who's the vice president of uh, corporate affairs, mm -hmm. and, you know, he said, hey, look, you know, you're doing your thing, you know, we, need, we wanna bring Bungalow back, you know, Bungalow 2.0, Let's put it together. You down there in the south. Let's put it together, and so, you know, we put it together, and that's where yeah. we are. And that's yeah. why they call you the deal maker. Yeah, the official deal maker. <laughs> the official deal maker. Official deal yeah. maker. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about Bungalow 2.0, and I'm really excited about working with all of these talented artists in the south. Yeah. I yeah. see. I'm looking to break some major records coming out of the south this year and next year. Yeah, yeah, and you will, man, because there's a lot of hungry people. There's a lot of hung, I mean, hungry MCs down there. Tell hungry them to get singers. at me, man. Yeah. Tell them to get at me. Go, I will now. You, you sure you ready for all of I'm that? I'm ready, man. All right, y'all heard it. Official, <laughs> send it to officialdealmaker at gmail.com. Bring it on. There we go. See, he put it out there. That's it. Man, okay, so let's let's jump around for a little okay. bit. Let's go back to, um. well, let me jump off by saying something that Kevin Hart said and kind of jumped off what you just said. Mm -hmm. Kevin Hart has a famous quote. A lot of people don't hear it because he says it backstage. And it's everybody wants to be famous, but nobody puts, wants to put the work in. Right. You started as, uh, when, when was that, that first opportunity that you got to be an intern and walk into an actual record company? That was, uh, wow, that was Tommy Boy under Kevin Maxwell. That was like, 80, uh, 87, 88. How was and that? I, I was, well, you know, I was working with, um, I was working underneath a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Kevin was one of them. LaVeva Mallison, who was, who was handling Cool Mo D, Cool Mo D's okay. manager, LaVeva Mallison. I was working under his tutelage as well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I actually went to, to Teddy Riley's house when he was living in the projects. Oh, wow. In Harlem. Yeah. You know, and he was working on Kids at Work album. Oh, wow. All right, you just took me back, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I, you know, and then I had several internships, and I've actually worked for it um, when Sleeping Bag Records sold to Def Jam, mm -hmm. Will Sokolov, Will and Juggy owned Sleeping Bag, and they separated. I went with Will, mm -hmm. so I worked under Will Sokolov in Manhattan, mm -hmm. in, in his New York office, his label was called Moonroof Records. I worked underneath them for like almost two years. So I learned the business. Uh, I invested mm -hmm. in myself, running back and forth from Mount Vernon to Manhattan. To Manhattan, yeah. To the office every day on yeah. the two train and leaving and getting home sometimes four, five, six o'clock in the morning, sleep until uh, 11, 30, 12 o'clock and get up and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. Everything from running around, passing out flyers for shows, to working radio, to um, coordinating all the logistics for some of these artists with their travel itineraries and everything. Mm -hmm. So just inundating myself, just immersed myself into the business. Wanted to learn everything. But these guys taught me, you know, how to work smarter mm -hmm. and not harder. You know, but I mean, you know, the, the, the business is the business at the end of the day. We have a saying that we got from, from JF, John Ferguson, that we use all the time is ATB. This is about the business. Are you about the business? Mm -hmm. If you're really about the business, then you got to live it. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we do at Wealth Nation. Like we, you know, it was crazy when we was walking around here, you know, looking at how everything is set up here. I was just thinking about how, how we're set up mm -hmm. and really our whole team, we all, you know, we all live together. Yeah. And yeah. we do the business 24 hours a day. Yeah, yeah. Every day. It's not like somebody has a job, you know, working part-time at Walmart or, you know, CVS or, or whatever. This is what we do all day, every day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. So it's just like... Grind's like that. Yeah, the grind is like that. Yeah. You know, and you that's what it takes to win. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, really what it takes I, to win. You think I got you in here, man. Right. <laughs> exactly, right, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, I looked at your grind, and I'm like, I got to do it. 
Yeah, cool. I, man, dude, I appreciate it. And shout out to Ashley for giving me the connect to connect to you and get you. I came here. all the way here from the A. Yeah, for man. you, brother. From the ATL. That's and right. We definitely appreciate it, bro. Absolutely, yeah, man. Definitely. Absolutely. Because you did not have to do it. No, I was going to try to call in or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Can we Skype? Can, Can we, we Skype, Skype it? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah nah, but we, we're, we're definitely going to get Wealth Nation even more known. I yeah. appreciate yeah, that. that. Well, that's, that's, what we, that's what we want. That's what yeah. we want. We're really trying to get the brand out there. You know, we consider ourselves to be a brand management firm, and that's what we want. So shout out to my man, DJ Jamie Yo, the brand builder, my yeah. right-hand man. Shout out to him. He couldn't make the trip, but, um, you know. But hey, man, y'all y'all coming back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. We hadn't even talked about that yet. I'm just saying, hey, you coming right, back? Right, don't right, work. right. No doubt, no doubt. I want to get no the doubt. whole team in here one day, man. We're gonna have oh, like two, man. two, four, six of your artists and line them all up. Okay, yeah, okay. We're gonna break they a would single. Love that. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna break we'll a single. Something. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, we'll do something huge out right here, man. Yeah. So, um, uh, and now you know, you um, you gonna you gonna uh, you about to get mad at me now. Cause I gotta, I gotta ask you, man. Oh I man, gotta ask you. come on. I gotta do it. Come on, bro. <laughs> so, man, you know, you like you, 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 you're deep on the business side. You mm -hmm. know your numbers. You're bright. You're smart. You got all of that. But I heard you wanted to be an artist at one point. Oh <laughs> man, you can't grow up with bro, all of that talent bro. and not want to be an artist at some. point. Point. Bro, you researched too well. <laughs> I don't know how you dug that up. Oh man, I don't know how you yeah. dug that up, but hey, you man, got me. You I, got I, me. We you we go. Me. We do our thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. You got some insider, but yeah. I at one point, I at one point was an aspiring artist, mm -hmm. and uh, I did get a record deal. Oh, with Moonroof Records, okay, which was like I said, Will Sokolov's company. Yeah, yeah, the company you were and, just speaking about. And yep, that I ended up working for by default. Okay, <laughs> that just happened. Wow, man, they well, said, oh, man. That, yeah, that's just... what happens when you have a single come out. Yeah, and uh, I had a record called No Pork in My Fried Rice. Okay, and that, was, that, that had to be the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it, they put it on. Um, you know, Will signed me to a single to an album deal. And it was crazy because my rap name was Prodigy. Oh wow! Yeah, my really? rap name. Yeah, my <laughs> rap name was Prodigy before before, was, Prodigy, before Prodigy. Was Prodigy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, that record came out, and I never forget. Me and my DJ CO, we was at his house. We were having a, a release party. Mm -hmm. His mom had cooked all his food. We had all our friends over and everything. The record was played on um, the biggest station, one of the biggest stations in New York at the time. It was, I think it was Power 99 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they put it on Make It or Break It. Uh-oh. <laughs> and when they, you know, they had that sound effect like, whoosh, Yeah. And they shattered the record in like 10 million pieces. And I'm sitting there like, what just happened? All our, fri <laughs> all our friends are there with us. And um, everybody's in this celebratory mode, and they play the record, and yeah. so they had the people call in and give, you know, so what do you want to do? No pork in my fried rice by Prodigy. Make it or break it. And uh, it was too many people that broke they it. That broke it, yeah. <laughs> and after that, that was, you know, that was the end of my rap career. Uh, yeah, they, they kind of yeah. <laughs> kind of let you know. Like, you hey, let um, me know, like, um, I need to stick to the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Sokolov came in and said, right. hey, man, this... <laughs> So it's, soccer um... law, so it's so funny, right? Because <laughs> after that, right, Will brought me in the office. He said, Prodigy, he said, um, he said, I like you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. He said, you already, and, and I think <laughs> yeah. you know the end of the story, right? And he gave me a job, and you know the rest yeah, of the history. Yeah, hey man, said, uh, this you know, this rap thing, you right. know, um, but <laughs> you have a lot of other qualities we really right. like here. Right. So what we're right. going to do is give right. you a regular job. Right. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I worked so hard to get that deal too, man. Oh man. You yeah. Understand? Yeah. So, but I, you know, what was good about it though, experiencing the grind of trying to get a, trying to get on, trying yeah. to get signed. Yeah. I went through that whole process as an artist, mm -hmm. so I understand that plight. Yeah, yeah. You know, you so know that, when somebody's faking the funk when they just show up and say, "Yo, I'm an MC, put yeah. me on," and you're like, "Okay, show me something." Right. Yeah. And now right. all they got, all they got is a hot sixteen, and that's it that they wrote no. three weeks prior. But they don't have the crowd. They don't have the the self the self financing. They haven't right. thrown money into themselves. Exactly. Yeah. They haven't invested. 
I yeah. mean, there's no way around, it, especially now. I mean, you know, you got to invest in yourself. But even back then, as you show you, even back then, it, and it's not just money, it was also time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you had to make that investment. And we were running around Mount Vernon, the Bronx, Queens, everywhere, you know, self-promoting ourselves and investing, mm -hmm. you know, time, energy, and effort into getting me on. Okay. And I yeah. actually, you know, and I got a man, boy, I don't know how you came up with that one, boy, bro. <laughs> I would tell you, but I never oh. give up. I never give up my sources, and I have multiple sources on that one, man. Oh, so I can't even. <laughs> oh. I'm not going to even put them out there like that. But, yeah, I had, I saw that. You, you are the, I'm going to let you know something for yeah. sure. You're the only media <laughs> on planet earth that has that story on me really yes oh man hey the only one nobody hey, I, knows that i tried <laughs> <laughs> well you better be lucky i like yeah. you bro man oh man man that makes me feel good that was your black hollywood live exclusive right there success is the new black <laughs> the official deal maker rob Terrell. <laughs> there it is there it is thank you the official deal maker rob Terrell. Special. was an artist was at an artist. one point yeah just don't don't cringe when you say yeah. it man it's i cool. mean you know Everybody I, I, got i'm dream. over it man took some therapy and That's you know it. yeah well, i'm good now yeah you know? yeah i'm good hey, hey hustle and flow they said every man every man got to have a dream <laughs> <laughs> That's what Terrence Howard said. I, right. No, that was Luda. Right. Luda told Luda, Terrence Luda, Howard Luda, that. Luda, yeah, right. everybody right. got to have a dream. Man, so now you got the, the stable of artists, man. Right. One of the most notable of which, um, well, uh, let me let me just pull up the list so I'm not, I don't want to slight anybody because you got yeah. everybody from, you. man, you got Soul For Real. That's why we opened yeah. up the show. Right. You you, you manage Soul For Real. You manage uh, Gunplay, Nancy Denise, Young John Mo, uh Benji Bucks, um, yeah, lot, lots and lots. Just of got people. Daisy, Daisy Grant. I was telling you about. Yeah, Daisy Grant. A, you was just Michelle, about. Michelle Obama's uh, songs for a healthy America. Mm -hmm. So she has two, two. She has the lead single off that CD. Mm -hmm. So we just signed her. Yeah, she's not on. She's not even on the site yet. So there's another exclusive. Yeah, another one. Yeah. Right. So go pick that up, people. Go check that out. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, cool, man. So with you, with your stable of artists, mm -hmm. and um, I know when, when was the point that you left NYC and you came down to Atlanta. That was uh, about a year and a half ago. You know, what happened was that Gunplay was in the middle of um, some legal some legal issues. Yeah. You know, everybody knows it's public information. Yeah, yeah. He was in the middle of some legal stuff. I was working with his personal manager at mm -hmm. the time. Um, she was kind of putting everything together. He was just in the process of getting his solo deal with Def Jam. Okay. And, you know when these legal problems really kind of rise, came to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And it was a mess. You know, we had to jump in there and really kind of, because I really, I'm, I'm his business manager. Mm -hmm. So I became his business manager. She was still handling the personal management side. Mm -hmm. And we were working together really as a team. And so I, you know, his finances, his, you know, all of his stuff was kind of like in a disarray. And, you know, he wanted to just really focus on the music. Mm -hmm. So they brought me in on the team and we really worked really hard, you know, um, putting everything, the pieces back together for him. And, you know, I thought we did a really good job. He, um, you know, ended up getting locked up, mm -hmm. you know, for a minute. And so during that time, we just tried to keep him afloat, keep him relevant. Yeah. You know, you know, he's not the easiest artist to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, he's a very talented artist. And, you know, of course, he got the MMG team behind him, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Ross Ross got his back. So, you know, just being able to have the opportunity to work with, you know, an artist signed to MMG and Def Jam. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was able to interact with, you know, a lot of people over at the Def Jam at UMG, you know, in terms of stuff that needed to get done for Gun, mm -hmm. you know. And so basically, you know, once that all kind of passed and he got through that, Mm -hmm. you know then was able to just basically get back to get work. back to it get yeah. back to it you know so that's where things are right now gun is working on his album mm -hmm. you know um his solo album coming out of def jam and you know she look out for that this summer cool cool yeah so gunplay needs to be like can he can he be like non-felony play or 
<laughs> misdemeanor play or something. <laughs> I, we need him. We need that brother to stop getting in trouble, man. I know, man. I know, <laughs> yeah. man. I know. Because he's man. good. He's like, good. Yeah. He's dope. He's yeah. dope. He, he wouldn't dope, be with man. Ross if he wasn't. Nah, yeah. you already know. You already know. And he's been with Ross for forever since yeah. going back to the beginning. Yeah. You yeah. know, so him and Ross are really, really tight. So, you know, like I said, it was a blessing, mm -hmm. you know, for me to have that opportunity to work with him. And I mean, we got really, really close to the point where, you know, I was over his house all the time mm -hmm. and just, you know, grinding with him and just helping him get all of his, you know, business affairs in, and things in, order. in order. Yeah. You know, so that he could just really just focus on the music and getting that next hit record, mm -hmm. you know, which is what everybody on the team wants for him. Yeah. You know, so, you know, like I said, Gunn is a great artist. He's an incredible artist. And obviously, Def Jam wouldn't sign him no solo deal if he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're just rooting for him, you know, to really come up, you know, with a with a monstrous record, mm -hmm. a monstrous single. And we believe that he's going to do it, you know. And like I said, with him having Ross and the whole MMG team behind him, you know, success for him is just inevitable. It's an yeah. inevitability. You know, okay. I really believe that. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, man. So... Um, what what about Soul for Real? Soul I, I for gotta real. know. Oh, I gotta know because these brothers, you know, everybody. We didn't even know that they were still really like out doing music anymore. Yeah. I didn't know if they yeah. broke up or what. Well, they did. They 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 had they had broken up. You know, of course, you know, um, two of the brothers went to jail for a pretty long period of time. Brian and the other brother, um, they went to jail. So Brian, when Brian came home, you know basically uh spring or whatever last year mm -hmm. and prior to that all the brothers were basically kind of really doing their own thing i got introduced to the group through chalk and chalk was trying to do his own solo deal his own solo situation mm -hmm. and i basically had to you know convince chalk that you got i know you want to do your solo project mm -hmm. and i know you want to just do your thing but the public your fan base they remember soul for real yeah yeah that's the brand want, recognition that's the brand recognition yeah and that's what they want back so we had a couple meetings we met was able to put the band back together so to mm -hmm. speak and you know i got them i got them a deal mm -hmm. you know through uh img warner brothers which i think you know is on their wikipedia and it's out there i got them a situation mm -hmm. and um you know and basically i did you know sign them to a management situation but because of reasons that I'd rather not discuss on the show, I just basically wanted to get the deal for them and yeah. then let them and walk away, let somebody else manage them. Okay, yeah. So so that's where we at right now. They have the situation, mm -hmm. um, and then Chalk has his solo deal as okay. well through the same situation. I brokered that deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it's on to the next deal for me. Cool. Yeah, that's it, man. You know what I mean? I, all these deals, I'm gonna get the official deal maker to cut me a deal. Hey, man, man that's, listen, man, that's what, I, that's what I do. That's what he does. That's what I do, man. Yeah, man, you're gonna be my manager. Hey, listen, man, <laughs> yeah. you you already on. So I mean that that's easy. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, I'm, hey, you can make it bigger, man. I, I, Absolutely. I see what you're doing. That's what I do. That's oh, what I do. Man. So, I try to explain to people one thing that's important to know about me is that you know a lot of people because Wealth Nation is a brand management firm, mm -hmm. they automatically assume that. You know, we manage everybody mm -hmm. that we deal with, but that's not necessarily always the case. A lot of times people will come to me just to get them a situation. Like mm -hmm. right now, I'm working on getting a deal for a little scrappy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working on a deal right now on that. Um, Mano. Okay, yeah. I'm working, I'm working on a situation for him. You know, so people come to me like, hey, you know, can you help me get a situation? Can you help me get to that next level? Yeah. And depending on who they are and what the set of circumstances are, you know, really kind of dictates and determines whether or not I get in on the management side yeah. or sometimes I'll just consult on the project and act as a broker dealer. Yeah. You yeah. know, and broker the situation, which I love. And that's that's really how I got my name, the deal maker or official deal maker, because just brokering situations for people you know, getting in and out of the deal, even working with their management. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're not on the management side. It all depends. It comes in all different shapes, forms, and sizes. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is, 
making a deal happen. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, true, true. So mm -hmm. moral of the story, have smart people in the room if you only want to focus on your art. <laughs> exactly. And make sure the smart people have your back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well said. That's how it goes. Yeah. Well said. Couldn't yeah. have said it any better. Absolutely. Ooh, I feel you, man. So now let's let's get into where well, you know what well, we got some time. Let's get into the industry itself and your vision because the musical industry has undergone a drastic shift over mm -hmm. the last decade from Napster all the way up to now. Where do you see it going? And and is every is it pretty much just the industry moving with is it transitioning with the times? Well, I mean, I think, you know, clearly the digital age has transcended the industry completely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is the rise of the independent era mm -hmm. that we're living in right now. You know, the Yo Gotti's, the Macklemore's and the, you know, these type of artists have shown the blueprint that, you know, independent artists can really do it. Mm -hmm. you know for themselves if they have the machinery around them around yeah. them mm -hmm. and that's the key critical point so what technology has done is provided most of the pieces of the machinery that back in the day the majors would would need to provide for you mm -hmm. so now the independents have access to all of these platforms via technology mm -hmm. and the internet and you know so an independent artist now can really make some noise and really make some significant headway with their career if, A, you know, they they understand what the machinery is mm -hmm. and assembly is required, mm -hmm. you know, so you got to have people around you that know how to put the pieces together. Yeah. Definitely. You know, and, and B, you know, you understand how to leverage these platforms, mm -hmm. you know, and so, but... When you look at what just happened, like the announcement of Universal bringing back Def Jam mm -hmm. as a standalone and Island and that kind of thing, you know, you kind of do see it, it reverting back to the label machinery because with all, here's an interesting stat, statistic for you, with all that the independents have done through TuneCore, CD Baby and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they still only represent like 1.2% of the annual gross sales revenue wow. for the music industry yeah. as a whole. Yeah. So, you know, with all that they've done. Yeah. And you know, they, they they've still, done so much and it's right. still that small. And it's still name. that small of a piece. Wow. Still the mainstream artists are still the yeah, the that's beast. The beast. I mean that's that's still where the you know the money, the vast majority of the money is being made. Mm -hmm. And those mainstream artists are what? They're signed to majors. Yeah. They're all signed to majors. They're all signed to majors. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that tells you right there. I mean, so, you know, you have people out there that may have an investor or, you know, things of that nature, and that's cool, but I just feel like at the end of the day, my opinion is, because I get asked this question a million times, mm -hmm. and my opinion is, can you make it as an independent artist, you know, without being signed to a major? My answer is yes, contingent upon the fact that you have all of the the machinery that the majors have and the money mm -hmm. behind you to support that infrastructure, mm -hmm. then yes. But other than that, I think you're going to have degrees of success that you'll experience, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Along the way. Along the way, you know, which are small wins, and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that, but how can you compete with a Beyonce yeah. or Jay-Z? You got a Jay-Z. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, who has, you know, 10 million dollar bag behind a record yeah i mean you know what i'm saying and stuff like that well, yeah how can you compete with that yeah yeah it's all next to impossible right yeah and sp jumping off of that struggle um for you personally mm -hmm. in this industry that we've heard it's cutthroat it's it's I, i've i've heard the music industry you know called every single name <laughs> that i can think of right what have been some of the hard struggles that you had to overcome Oh man, wow! You know, probably the biggest one is is uh, betrayal. Mm. Betrayal. Thinking that the people that you're working with, because we all working together in one mm -hmm. common goal, one cause, are really with you. Mm -hmm. But then, as soon as there's a dollar on the table, you know what I mean. As soon as somebody else offers them more money, 
or offers them a better what they perceive as a better situation mm -hmm. the loyalty is gone just in an instant so that feeling of betrayal of wait a minute man we you know i thought we was together we grinding you know we running around here together and it's like yeah you know one team one goal and i got your back and you know you my boy and da 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 da, da. but as soon as a bag is in place mm -hmm. as soon as some money's in place or you know like i said a better situation that's when you really find out and that's been the hardest thing for me and that's why i have this saying you know in wealth nation like la cosa nostra you know what i mean the mm -hmm. family the family business because that loyalty you know, I've kind of like related to the mob mm -hmm. because, you know, you do that stuff in the mob, man, you, you know, you yeah, get, that's, you know, yeah, you know, know what I'm saying? You, right. Yeah. yeah. So, you, you know, so when that cutthroat kind of backstabbing thing, that's probably the, you know, the biggest struggle. And then in the early stages for us, really not having no, no real bread to run around with. True. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a struggle, man. When you don't really have a lot of money i mean we cool now because yeah. we've been able to make some things happen but early on you know me and my partner jamie yo the brand builder we running around with no money trying to build that capital trying to build that capital and really trying to make a whole lot of stuff happen with a very very little bit of money and very few resources yeah and so sticking to it and staying with it under those dire circumstances when it's like the rent need to be paid yeah the car payment need to be paid but I need money for studio time yeah. or a photo session or I need a, a plane ticket to get to California mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, whatever it might be. And you like, uh, how do yeah, you got to juggle that. Yeah. Tupac famously said trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know what I mean? Hard to be legit. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And the right. Exactly. Because we are legit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, staying legit and doing that and really staying focused. You know, it's a lot of days, man. It's been, you know, ramen noodles and, yeah. you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. and Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? The struggle is real, but the struggle so is, is the real, success. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but we're here now. So, we, you know, we, we made great strides and great improvement. And, you know, I could say I was able to afford a, you know, ticket to get out here. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't have to sacrifice my rent, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that, brother. And it was right, it was <laughs> yeah. right after the first, too, you know? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. The first head just came up. Yeah, today you know is the, the fourth. You mess, you mess with my yeah. bill money now. Nah, yeah, see? See, hey, well. You know, nah, I'm just bad. I'm messing with you. <laughs> Well, you you, you here it. and um, here. you know, um, let me see. I I'll, I'll keep because I got one final shot at it. I'm gonna give for um, um, this particular day, but I'll, I'll save that for the end um, because it has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about. But it does have to do with success and black men in general. So people okay. who know their history, they'll know it um, when I get to the end of that. So I got a couple minutes left. So I'm gonna wrap this up with. I, I'm gonna give you a loaded question. Oh man! Yeah, it, it's not gonna you've be. Been, it's not gonna been, be. You've hard. been loaded the whole yeah. time, so I mean, we might as well end it with a bang. I mean, you know, six shooter. Oh man! Um, actually, call me AK forty-seven. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you this. What do young artists on the come up need to know about money in the game outside of stuff that you've already said? And Besides the fact that they need it, that they need it. Yeah, yeah, and and mo mo more importantly, how to keep it. Right, because a lot of them are spending money on foolishness. Well, that was that's what I was just about to say. I yeah. mean, the the main thing, first of all, that they need to know is where to spend it and who to spend it with. Okay, yeah. Because I mean, these young artists coming up now, man, they don't they're not they don't have proper guidance. Mm -hmm. So they getting beat out here left and right. I mean, I talked to some of these guys. They sound like a, a woman scorned, abused woman. They've been abused all kind of ways, paying, yeah. you know, five hundred dollars a pop to perform. You know, uh, getting beat on features. I mean, I done sent, yeah, hey, man, I sent this guy money for a feature, two racks, and, you know, I'm still waiting on a record. Well, yeah. you keep waiting because yeah. you'll never, you'll probably never it. see it. That's that Craigslist deal right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're spending money on things that, yeah, I mean, these are things that they need to do, mm -hmm. but because they don't have proper guidance and proper representation. The most important thing that I would say is proper representation. Okay, yeah and dealing with all of these different aspects yeah of the business if you're an artist be an artist if mm -hmm. you don't know the business if you're not really about that that life and you don't really have the credentials or the experience and neither does your homeboy or your homegirl mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? Get at somebody like a Wealth Nation, a Rob Terrell, mm -hmm. you know, who does notice mm -hmm. for real, for real, that can represent you and handle your business so you don't get beat on features. You don't get beat on publishing. You don't get in situations where you don't have a proper release to release the record. Mm -hmm. So now you done paid for this feature that you got. Oh, I got a feature with Gunplay. I got a feature with so-and-so. It don't mean nothing because Def Jam and Maybach, you don't have a release from them. Yeah. So how are you going to put this record out commercially? Can't put it out. Yeah. You can't even put this record out. So what you just spend four racks for? Yeah. You just got a nice track you can listen to in your house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Amen. So that whole aspect of all the money that they need to spend, first of all, they got to have bread. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, you can forget about being in this business. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no bread. Period. Yeah, true. You have to have bread. I don't, you know, how you come about getting your bread, whether it's through an investor, whether you trap boy, whatever, whatever you do, that's mm -hmm. not my business. Mm -hmm. And you know, just but come to the table with the bread. You gotta have bread. Yeah, yeah. Get you your, know, get your money right. That's right. It. This, yeah. The artists that are disillusioned about, well, I'm dope. I'm yo man, but I'm hot. But you know, I'm local hot. I'm mm -hmm. everybody knows me. My man, who cares? What's your budget? You want to know how hot you are? Tell me what your budget is. You want to know if you got a hit single or hit record? Tell me what your budget is. You want to know if you're going to make it? Tell me what your budget is, and I'll tell you how far you can go. There it is. There it is from Monster in the Game. <laughs> official deal maker, baby. The official deal maker. Man, I got an education today. <laughs> <laughs> the man, CEO of Wolf Nation Entertainment, Mr. Rob Terrell. Man, I got to thank you for coming through, bro. Oh, man, <laughs> thank you so much. This, I got to admit, this was one of the best interviews. Oh, dude. You were so prepared. <laughs> and, oh, man, you went in the archives on the brother. <laughs> I got you, Rome. I owe you one. But it's I been a blessing, to. man. I bet. I, dude, I appreciate it. I thank you for coming through. Absolutely. You didn't have to do it and you choose to you chose to travel and spend this time talking to me here on black hollywood live so for myself for the official deal maker who was so gracious to sit in with me today black hollywood live success is the new black i'm Rome moore uh next week i have um i'm forgetting who my next guest is next week I'm thinking. Oh, wait, no, it is Mr. Lawrence Charles um, from the Charles and Company Tea Company. So he'll be sitting in the studio and we'll be talking to him about his entrepreneurship. Once again, I'm Ron Moore from Mr. Rob Terrell. We thank you. Thank you for listening. From producers Maria Menunos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.